and he said to do us good. Father, we give you praise. We worship you. We glorify you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for preserving our lives. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for this brand new month, this brand new year. Thank you for the great and amazing things that you have in store for us. We give you praise. We bless your holy name. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, unto you is the gathering of your people in this few minutes. Oh, God, as we look into your word again, we are asking, oh, God, that you will speak to our hearts afresh. Give everyone an unforgettable encounter. Lord, Heavenly Father, bless us out of Zion. You say we go from strength to strength. Everyone in Zion that appears before you, we ask that you renew our strength and empower us and equip us to mount up with wings as eagles. Thank you, Father, for miracles, signs, and wonders. Let it accompany the preaching of your word. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressor, the captives free. Make the poor rich and make the rich richer. Save the lost and deliver, oh God, your oppressed. We thank you, Father. We call it done in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big, big clap offer and a big shout. Hallelujah. Welcome to this great year that God has packaged for you. Our year of more and more of God's goodness. Somebody said 2021 is my year of more and more of God's goodness. Yes, in the name of Jesus, you will see and taste the goodness of God in amazing and spectacular ways like you have never known before. I want to welcome all those worshipers with us online on Facebook, YouTube, our Zoom uh, brethren. We welcome all of you to this wonderful service in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are watching from, I want you to please share this broadcast right now uh, and let your friends know that God is about to speak to them. I, I carry a word from God that will change your life and open up your year in a unique way. So please share this uh, broadcast right now if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube and let us know where you're watching from, what part of the world you're watching from. We want to want to hear from you. Glory be to God. Uh, leave, a, leave a comment, you know, right there and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, we have a prophetic theme for the month. Is the foundation for more and more uh, of God's goodness. My month of laying the foundation to taste and see more of God's goodness. Can I hear you? Amen. We need foundation. Foundation is very important. Glory be to God. So this is the month to lay a foundation to taste and to see more and more of God's goodness. You will see more and more of God's goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. So very briefly, I want to share a word that I believe is a very uh, powerful foundation for the goodness of God. How can we taste more of God's goodness? Amen? Amen. It's important for us to settle it in our hearts that God is good. Amen. I say God is a good God. Amen. And God longs to do us good. Amen. Yes. And I pray and I prophesy that you would taste more and more of his goodness in your life Amen. and fears in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when God introduced himself to Moses, you know, he passed by Moses because Moses said, I want to see your glory. I want to have an encounter with you. I want to see you. In Exodus 34, verse 6, the Bible says, God passed by him and proclaimed and said, I am the Lord merciful, you know, and gracious, long-suffering, and what I abundant in goodness and truth. So God introduced himself as the God who abounds in goodness. Amen. That means he learns to do good. Amen. He is a doing good God. Amen. 
Yes, he has so much. He abounds in goodness. Glory be to God. In fact, when he sent his son to the world, when he sent Jesus to the earth, the Bible says he anointed Jesus with Holy Ghost and with power. And he commanded him or commissioned him to go about doing good. God doesn't do evil. God does good. He said he anointed him with Holy Ghost and with power, accented him. He said, go about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. amen. The devil is a bad devil, but God is a good God. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. And something good is going to happen in your life. Amen. Something good is going to happen in your family. Amen. Something good is going to happen on your job, amen. in your career. Amen. I said something good is going to happen to you. Amen. Let your amen be the loudest if you are the one God is talking about. Because God abounds his goodness and is about to do you good in spectacular ways that you have never known. Somebody say, God is about to do me good. Yeah, that's why we love Jesus. That's why we love God. He said he was healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So healing is part of God's goodness. Healing is part of God's goodness. Yeah, so in this season of pandemic, you're going to live in divine health. You're going to see God's goodness in your health. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? God's going to heal you and deliver you from all oppressions amen. of the devil amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, and the good God will be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says every good and every perfect gift comes from God. God is the source of every good thing. So any good thing you enjoy and you are going to enjoy, know that it is coming from God. He said every good and every perfect gift comes from above. It comes from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither is that shadow of turning. James 1, 17. It doesn't turn anybody down. He doesn't hold back his goodness. Can I hear you? Amen. So you are going to experience good gifts this year. You're going to express perfect gift, and they're going to come from God into your life, into your affairs. So, so God is the source of every good and every perfect gift. And he said there is no shadow of turning, no variableness. You know, he, he gives, you know, generously to everyone who goes to him and who believe in him. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. We're also... We also see in Psalm 84, verse number 11, it says, For the Lord is, the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Amen. No good thing will he withhold from all those. There's a condition there. Who will walk uprightly? <laughs> Can I hear you? <laughs> so God is saying, you know, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of rewards. God doesn't bless everybody the same. He said, I give every man according as his work shall be. Yes. God doesn't give everybody the same. You see, the love of God is unconditional. It is for everybody. But the rewards of God, the blessings of God, the goodness of God, you know, is for those whom God has ordained to bless. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. The goodness of God is for those who God has ordained to bless. Amen. So God will bless you exceedingly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And God will bless you abundantly. Amen. He said, no good thing. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> no good thing will he withhold from them that what? Walk uprightly. So if you don't want any good thing to be withheld from you, make sure that your walk with God is upright. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. 
Oh, yes. I said the love of God is unconditional. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the love is unconditional, but the goodness, uh, I mean, the, those who experience, you know, God giving them every good thing they desire will have to walk uprightly. Yeah, God will be very unjust if he does, if, he, if whether you care about him or you walk up right or you don't walk, and we all get the same. That would not be, that would not be, you know, that would come from a just God. Can I hear you? Amen. Yes. You know, the love of God are unconditional, but the blessings of God always carry condition. You must know that. Yeah, the love of God. Because somebody say, oh, I love God. You know, that's good. But it's not even the love of God that rewards you. It says God will reward every man according as his work shall be, not, not according to love. Right. Amazingly. Amen. But I don't want, that's where I'm going. I just, you know, let's keep going. God is a good God. He said, we know we talk good from them to whom it is due. Also in Proverbs chapter number three, verse 27, he spoke and said to us, we also should know we talk good to them to whom it is due if it is in the power of our hand to do it. Because we have the nature of God. That's why the Bible says, do good unto all men, especially those who are of the household of faith for all nations. <laughs> so we deserve the good and we are going to enjoy the good. So this indeed is our year of more and more of God's goodness. Can I hear you? Amen. He said, do good to all men, especially. So we have a preferential treatment for enjoying God's goodness. Special advantages will come into our life because we are in the household of faith for all nations. Can I hear you? Amen. Also in Jeremiah, Jeremiah, we're trying to settle something. I want, to, I want to talk to you, you know, on how you can express God's goodness. But let's settle the fact that God is good, Amen. abundantly good, and he loves to do good. In Jeremiah 32, from verse 39 to 42, he said, I will give them one heart and one way, and they, that they may fear me forever for the good of them. So God is saying, if you fear him, if you love him, respect him, it's for your good. It's for my good, it's for our good. And their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to what to do them good. I will not turn away from doing good. I will make a covenant of goodness with them. But I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good. God will do you good. And I will plant them in the land assured, assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. For thus hear the Lord as I have brought this, all this evil upon the people, so will I bring upon all upon them all the good that I have promised them. Amen. God says he will bring all the good. Amen. All the good. That's why it's our year of more and more Amen. of his goodness. Amen. All the good thing that God has promised you, you're going to get it. In Amen. fact, this year is going to be a year of enjoying God's goodness like Amen. never before. Amen. Just when you are testifying of this, God will do another thing. Amen. Just when you are testifying of breakthrough your job, he will do it in your home. Amen. He will do it in your relationship. He will do it concerning your finances. God will do you good. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? So God is a good God. Therefore, it is time for us to start believing you know, God for more and more of his goodness. It's time for us to start believing that we want to taste the goodness of God. Let us release our, 
you know, faith and stretch our faith to taste his goodness. Can I hear you? Amen. Yeah. Because God is good, we need to release our faith to taste and to experience more and more of his goodness. We need to stretch our faith. It's time now to say, Lord, I want to taste every good thing that God can do in my life. I want to experience it. I want to partake it. I mean, partake of it. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. God, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Know the difference. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Say, but I am come that they might have life and have it what more abundantly. I came for them to have abundant life, abundant good life. I didn't come to deprive them of any good thing. I came so that they can have every good thing that God has promised them. And it will begin to happen in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So, but now let me share with us the foundation for more in our lives. The foundation for more. If we want to enjoy more in our life, what is the foundation for more? Dreams. Your dream. Dream is our foundation for more. Your dream is the supernatural elevator that can take you from where you are to where you ought to be or where you want to be. Your dream, your dream. Your dream is an elevator that will elevate you and take you to new levels in life. It's, it's your ladder for climbing levels or changing levels in your life. Your dream, your dream. So God works with our dream to bring us into more. You cannot experience more if you don't begin to dream for more. Yeah. So the, what you need now to taste more, you have to dream for more. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. God works with our dreams to bring us into more and more in our lives. Yes. Anytime God wants to uh, release more into a person's life, he gives the person a dream. He puts a dream in our heart so we can be positioned for more. In Genesis 32, uh, or 28, I beg your pardon, from verse 10 to 15, it was, we, have, we see the story of Jacob. Jacob was, you know, uh, running away from his brother who was, you know, aiming to, you know, kill him. So he ran without, you know, you know, when somebody leaves the house in a hurry, he not necessarily won't be able to pack anything. <laughs> so he didn't have anything. So he was running for his life. Can I hear him? Amen. Amen. <laughs> There's a proverb, you know, one of my friends used to say it, and I can honor him to this day. He used to, it's what, it's what, it's what, when I heard the proverb from, he said, and I've never, I've been talking, when I remember in my life, he said, when a woman is running and she's still able to hold her breast, <laughs> what is pursuing her is not serious. <laughs> That's part of this thing. Well, I have problems. <laughs> and I, I, every, I think about it. So <laughs> when, when you are running, glory be to God, like Jacob was running, he couldn't get, he couldn't take anything. So it was on zero. Hello, somebody. Genesis 28, verse 10. And Jacob went from Beersheba and went towards Aaron, and he lighted upon a certain place 
and tarried there all night because the sun set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow. Can you imagine the hardship in his life? It was in a hard place, a difficult place. And for him to make, you know, uh, stones, pillow, I don't think anything is harder than that. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the peak of toughness. And he lay down in the place to sleep. And then the good God wanted to help him. So he, he, he dreamed. Right? That's how you're going to change from your hard place, no matter how hard. I don't think your case can be so hard that you are sleeping <laughs> using the pillow to be, I mean, the stone to be your pillow. Even if that is your case, there is still hope for you. Amen. Can I hear it? Amen. You can enter into more, and the key to more is your dream. You have to dream to move from where you are to where you ought to be. Yes. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up to the earth, and to the and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I'm the Lord God of Abraham, thy father. You know, when you begin to dream, you're going to hear God's voice. You hear God's voice in the midst of a dream. God speaks to dreamers. I'm going to show some. Yeah, God speaks to dreamer. God loves dreamer. God relates with dreamer. God created us to be dreamers. Amen. Oh, yes. <laughs> Are you see here? And the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, you know, the angels of God descending on it, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I'm the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it that hard place. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you influence and provision in that land. And to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. And thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee shall all, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I'm with you. I will keep you in all the places where thou goest and bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. The man in the path place who began to dream, God began to tell him that as you are dreaming now, I'm going to enlarge your coast. I'm going to give you the east, the west, north, and the south. I'm going to bless you that your, your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. You know, the purpose of the dream is to produce a hope for a change. That's the purpose of a dream. The purpose of a dream is to produce what a hope for a change. Yeah, the uncommon dream is what but the change we desire in our lives. Through your dream, you can be transferred from where you are, transported. You can transport yourself into your future, the future you desire, through your dream. Yeah. The dream is very powerful. It's an invisible conveyor, you know, that can bring you into your future. It can carry you. It's like, you know, the dream is a vehicle that transfers, that may transport us from where we are to where we want to be. You know, you ride your car to go from place to place. How do you move your life from place to place? It's through your dreams. Your dream is the vehicle that will take you from where you are to where you want to be. Can I say to us that, you see, you will never wander accidentally into your desired future. You have to dream your way there. Yeah. yeah. Your dream for more and more is what will take you to your desired future. You will never accidentally just get to your future that you want, except you learn to dream your way there. I will say it again. You will never accidentally wander into your desired future, except you dream your way there. <laughs> Yes. 
So the question is, do you currently have a dream of the future you desire? Do you? Yeah, you certainly need a dream mm -hmm. to be able to enter into your future. But do you have a dream? So this is the time for you to begin to dream. Amen. What is a dream? What is a dream? A dream is an invisible photograph of the future that you want to future in. An invisible photograph of the future you want to future in. That is, a dream is an invisible portrait of your future that is painted on the canvas of your mind. An invisible portrait of your desired future painted on the canvas of your mind. <laughs> God can put a dream in your heart or your mind regarding the future you want to experience and you also can dream because God created us to be dreamers. Amen. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. So do you currently have a dream of what you want your future to become in your life? Dream is a God thing. Dream is not an evil thing. Dream is a God thing. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. And dream is a good thing. You know, there are many good things that can be uh, used for evil. Just like money is a God thing, but people can use it for evil. Yeah. The same way, dream is a God thing. People can turn it into an evil device. Yeah. But God created us to be dreamer. Mm -hmm. Do you know that when God, you know, when you become born again, God deposited the Holy Spirit on, mm -hmm. on the inside of us yeah. so that we, it can help us to dream. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to help us to dream big. Can I hear you? Amen. Yeah. In John chapter 2, verse 28 to 29, it says, It shall come to pass after what I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. And your old men shall what? Dream dreams. And your young men shall see vision, prophecy, dreams. And visions. Then he went into the next verse. Because when you read this now, watch a minute. Let me do some teaching for a minute. <laughs> Revelation light. He said, it's, when you read, he said, Oh, he said, Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So you see, you now categorize it and say, Your old men. But they say, I will pour my spirit. So the spirit will make the daughters and the sons to prophesy. The spirit will make old men to dream dreams, and young men to see vision. So it's the spirit walking that is making it work. Then he went further in verse 29 and said, and upon what? The servant and upon the hermit in those days will have power my spirit. That means if the spirit comes, what he does, he will still do it all. <laughs> so the sons, the daughters, the old, the young, they can prophesy, they can dream, they can see vision. The language of the Holy Spirit is dreams and visions. Can I hear an amen? amen? That's the language of the Holy Spirit. And they are the foundation seed for more and more of God's goodness in our lives. Mm. So learn to dream by, you know, how do you learn to dream? By carrying the image of your, uh, uh, what's it called? Desire accomplishment, you know, in life, carry that image of yourself accomplishing great things in your life. Carry that image in your mind. Have a dream of success and, you know, uh, victories strongly ingrained on your mind, on the canvas of your mind. That's, you have to learn to do that. And always carry that picture in front of you. Can I hear an amen? amen? Carry that picture in front of you always, all the time. Learn to play a movie of your success 
in your mind. Your success and your future success and your triumph. Let that movie be plain in your mind. You see, your, your mind is your own personal world. Your mind. The change that will come will begin in your mind. That's why I say, be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. How you handle your mind will determine how your life goes. In fact, the, the, it, is, it is said that we go in the direction of our dominant thoughts. So whatever is dominating your mind will happen in time in your life. So learn to make sure that you are playing movies, watch this, of your desired success and victory and accomplishment in your life, in your mind. Play the movie until it becomes so real to you. <laughs> By the time it becomes so real to you, it will begin to happen. Amen. And when it begins to happen, people will be wondering, how did you get this happening? They'll be excited, but you have lived it long ago. You have lived it over and over again. So it's like your natural world. And they are just wondering, how did you get here? Can I hear him? Amen. Yes. Learn to have your own movies, you know, of your future success playing in your mind. Write your script. <laughs> Write your script. Stage your own movie. <laughs> God is not against you dreaming. In fact, God wants you to dream. We, we, I think I, I was at the night of uh, the crossover service, I was telling you that God delights in doing new things. So he's looking for a dreamer. He, God seems to be bored with routine. That's why he made all of us different and unique. Different sizes, different heights, different looks, different colors. You know, different. We don't have the same uh, fingerprint. The same DNA. Because God is a God of variety. He loves to dream. He's bored with this. So if you begin to dream, God's going to come say, yeah, I found somebody I can, you know, I can fellowship with. May you be that person that God will be fellowshipping with. Because he wants to do something new, something exciting. So he's looking for dreamers. Your mind is your own personal world. Whatever you movie you play in your mind will happen in time. Maybe most of us, were, in fact, we are here today because of the movies we have played. To move from here to where we need to be, you have to make sure that you play your movie. In your movie, be the hero. Yeah. Without apologies. That's right. Be the Rambo. <laughs> Of your movie, be the Steve the Rocky of your movie. Yeah, you know when you watch when you watch movie, you see you the 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 the, 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 the Superman, the superhero, the strong person is the person you identify. You have ever identified with the person losing? Yeah. Uh, if you are me, I don't know. I don't identify with the people. I always identify with you know. Even if it's, even if I'm watching you know uh, mafia movies, I want to identify with the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be that kind of a person. Play the movie of your life in your mind. What your future will be like. You know, the, oh man, many people play the wrong movies. That's right. That's right. Don't be play movies of defeat, That's right. failure. Lack and want. Mm -hmm. You have to fight that. Mm -hmm. Play the movie of you riding the best, eating the best, Amen. living the best. God is not Amen. against it. Amen. God is for it. Amen. Yeah. God is so for that. Yeah. That's how you learn to dream. Are you still here? Yeah. You know, Jesus gave us an example, you know, with his life how to dream in his life. Before Jesus came to the earth, Jesus, Jesus had one goal. His goal is to be at the right, to get to the get back to the right hand of the Father. So he knew he had to pass through the cross. 
the cross was a passage to the right hand of the Father. So he would say, look, I'm going. I'm going to be crucified. That's what the problem. But the third day, I'm going to rise again. <laughs> the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, who for the joy that was set before him. It wasn't cross that was before him. It was what? Joy that was set before him. That was his dream. He endured the cross. He despised the shame. Now he sat at the right hand of the God, the Father. Hebrews 12, verse 2. So what do you set before you? Your strength is in your dream. In fact, you don't need to develop strength. Your dream will bring, the strength of your dream will make you strong. The, 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 the picture of your dream will bring strength into your life. What you endure is a function of the kind of dream you have. What you are able to endure is a function of your dream. Once your dream is so powerful, you don't mind what it's going to take for you to get there. You're going to develop muscles in between. You're going to despise any shape because, you know, you're going to, you're going to sit at the right of the Father. Look at the scripture there. I want to, I want to let's, let's do some teaching again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You love these teachings. Yes. Looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Say, I can't take that. It's because your dream is not strong enough. Once your dream is strong enough, you can take anything. Can I hear amen? amen? He despised the shame. You know, this is coming to my mind. So I will say, you know, when you dream of having a successful marriage, you're going to take anything from your spouse. <laughs> See, you're <all> quiet. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be able to tolerate. Yes. So I can't beg no man. I can't apologize no man. You don't, your dream is not strong for marriage. If your dream is small, small for your marriage, you're going to even kneel down. You're, when you are giving her a ring, didn't you kneel down? <laughs> Which one? Is it the left or the right? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> and now she says she's mad. You say you can't apologize. Come on, get on your knees. You keep your marriage. If you have a dream for that. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Then look at verse 3. I want you to, I want us to see this by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit showed me this. Watch this. Verse 3. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll keep going. For consider him that what that endured such contradiction of the sinner, sinners against himself, lest you be what? Wearied. And faint, we are in your mind. So that means Jesus had something in his mind. There's another scripture where it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. There was something in his mind. He had a dream. The right hand of the Father was on his mind. What's on your mind? <laughs> Learn to always envision yourself succeeding more and more. Get a fresh vision of what you can do, what you can become, what you can have. Get that vision in your mind. That's how you're going to become more. Don't be afraid to dream. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Get a vision in your mind of what you can do, what you can be, what you can have. Play it over and over in your mind. <laughs> when you begin to dream, your dream is going to make some people mad. Yes, Who can stand your dream? Yeah, your dream, yeah, your dream will, will, will infuriate some people. 
And you, in fact, you're going to know those who are really your, you can relate with based on those who can handle your dream when you share with them. Because when you begin to share your dream with people, and when your dream is big enough, you can't keep it quiet. You have to share it. But you're going to know those who can start your dream. Can I hear an amen? amen? Oh, yeah. Look at Joseph, the master dreamer. In Genesis 37, verse 5 to 11. And Joseph dreamed a dream. That's the key to, that's the foundation for more and more. Can I hear it? Amen. Amen. And told it his brethren, and they hated him. Yet what? The more. <laughs> and he said unto them, Here I pray you the dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brother said, What? And our own sheep was bowing to your own sheep. Then they said, oh man, praise the Lord. What is it? That was it. They praised the Lord that he was a good dreamer, right? No. And his brother said unto him, shall thou indeed reign over us? Did he tell them it was going to reign over them? He didn't say. He's just talking about his dream. You see, your dream, when you begin to talk about your dream, people begin to see themselves in your dreams, where they, where they stand. <laughs> And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Then you would think because of that, he would stop dreaming. And he dreamed yet another dream and went and told his brethren. You see that? Don't stop dreaming. When people hate you, for some people can't dream for that because they hear people hating them for their dream. People don't like it. People are, you know, Envious, they attack you, then you stop dreaming. No, 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 no. You can't be most of people. You, that's what people do. They, they quit their dream because they don't get no support, no backing. But your dream is your dream. And you are the only one that can bring about the fulfillment of your dream as long as you continue to dream it. Many people want support. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the Bible says, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. <laughs> more, even more. And behold, the sun and the moon. So you see, let them alone. And the 11 stars made obeisance to me. He didn't call their name. He didn't even say their own. At the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. He didn't say your stars, the 11 stars. And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed to say, whatever the situation you might find yourself in, Learn to dream. He was the errand boy in the family. He was what the errand boy, but he was yet the dreamer. <laughs> so in that situation, you find yourself, whatever situation you might be, dream. That situation confronting you right now. Begin to dream of your success. Yeah. yeah. In that dream, position yourself to be. The, the star. Can I hear amen? amen. Yeah. <laughs> Dreams are very powerful. Yeah. Dream of you winning. Dream of you becoming victorious. You see, you are dreaming either which way, but I'm just admonishing you to dream of you becoming victorious. You know, some people have negative dreams and bad dreams about themselves. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
our dreams are the, they are crucial to the outcome of our life. The question is, you know, when you think of yourself, when you think now, when you when you dream of yourself, do you dream of yourself as per your uh, past failures, defeat? You know, we have a way of dreaming of ourselves and projecting our past failures, our past challenges, limitations, or bringing you know, our past experiences into our present. Then we project that past into the future. Oh, nothing could ever happen to me. In, 20, in uh, 18, 22, you know, people from my, my village, this is where they come, people of my color, they don't do anything, whatever, whatever, where, I'm, where I came from, you know, we don't, people don't have much. So you are using that now to dream about your future. So you are, pro, you are bringing your past into the present and projecting it into your future. So don't allow, even your present circumstance, you know, sometimes you might be in a situation now and your circumstance, you know, uh, your limiting circumstances, they can taint the picture of your future. Can I hear you, amen? amen? Yeah. Your present difficulties can taint the picture of the future that God wants you to live in. You look at your life and say, oh, can any good thing ever come out of Nazareth? Out of my life? But I admonish you to see yourself, you know, succeeding. See yourself becoming victorious. See the possibilities in your life. Amen. Don't allow your present circumstances to keep you. Can I hear you? Amen. amen. Our dreams are actually the picture of the potential. That is what, when you have a dream, that means that is what God is telling you can happen in your life. Okay. Yeah. That's what you can be, do, or have. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, but that is what can happen because your dream will require your participation. Right. Even when God put a dream in your heart, your dream will require your participation. Your dream will require your participation. And there are some things that that will go with, and in the fullness of time, we're going to be able, if God permits, we're going to see all those. Can I hear your amen? amen? And let me say this again. Many people despise their dream because whenever God gives you a dream, now God giving dream, whenever God gives you a dream, your dream doesn't look like your present condition. Your dream will always be far glorious, far better. It will exceed anything that you currently are in right now. Mm -hmm. You can't relate with your, we can't relate with it in your present circumstance. When Joseph was the errand boy, but he said he was dreaming that he saw, you know, the stars and the sun and the stars, you know, and the moon, they were bowing to him. But he was the errand boy. But he believed it. Can I hear him? Amen. You have to believe in your dream. No matter how down you are, you may be down and in the dumps right now, but that's not where you're going to be. You can, you're going to move into something bigger by your dreams. Can I hear you, amen? Yeah, you go, there's a throne calling your name. I said there's a throne calling your name. Yeah. Dream of your throne and your fame. Dream of that. You know, you can have a dream for every aspect of your life. Yeah. Your financial life, you can have a dream of you being, you know, a financial deliverer for your nation, for, for your family, for your life, for your church. Mm -hmm. dream. In fact, listen, listen to this. Whether you dream of succeeding or dream of failing, you are still going to dream. And you're using the same energy. So why not? I want to break that fear in your mind. See, people are even afraid to dream, even in their mind. You understand? You are even afraid to dream of success in your mind. But you are always dreaming of something. So why not really dream? Well, you know, I heard many years, I was reading a book many years ago, and a great man of God, Yon Gicho, said, if you're going to drown uh, in Sixth Street, are you going to drown in an ocean? Drowning is drowning. So if you know you go, drowning is going to be the end of it, why not just drown big? 
And why would I drown, want to drown in a city when I can drown in an ocean? <laughs> that woke me up. You know, so if anything you want to do, why do it big? You're going to do it anyway. I just want to get a job to survive. And just go along. Why not own the company? <laughs> Why not dream of owning the company? I had I, I had the story of a man, a, a cleaner. He, he was a cleaner in a hotel, and he had a picture of the hotel, very mighty in his hotel on his table. When he comes, he puts it every day. He's cleaning. He's looking at that hotel. One day, I'm going to own this hotel. One day, this hotel is going to be mine. He began to dress. The dream began to make him to dress. When he's a cleaner, but a cleaner with a different. <laughs> you might know his name. His name is Conrad Hilton. Wow. Amen. Wow. He was a cleaner. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've heard of Hilton Hotel somewhere. Yeah. Huh? All, all, all over the place, you said. The man that owns it, the guy with wow. Queen. Wow, I never thought of that. Oh, yeah. That's why the message is being preached so that I can hear it now. <laughs> can I hear it? Wow. So you can begin to dream to own the organization. When you get to the place, don't dream, dream that you're going to be only buying the place, only to the top. You can have, I say, you can have a dream for every aspect of your life. You can have financial dreams. I can have dream for your physical look to be healthy, yes, to be good, to dream the best shape because you need yes. the body to carry the anointing. Yes. Can I hear you? Yes. You need to dream to look good. Have a dream of you looking, you know, the dream. And you also can have a spiritual dream. Yes. My Lord. Somebody says, it's time to dream for more. Yeah. Oh, come on. Say like you're ready for to dream. Say it's time for, to dream for more. Yeah. Glory be to God. When is that? Not, when did I start preaching? Hallelujah. I'm looking at the time like, why is that time correct? Because <laughs> I'm just going to lay the foundation. <laughs> Why are you getting something right now? Yes. Are you going to dream? It's time to dream. Yes. This is yes. that's the, that's the seed for more. Our dream. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? Do you have a dream? Yes, sir. You need to begin to dream now, yes. because God told me. God told me. He said, "This is a year Hallelujah. for dreams. It's a yes. year for dreamers. A year to dream big." Yeah, yeah. It's a year. You see, many people are saying, "Oh, I want God to, uh, I want God to bless me." God is wondering with what, <laughs> where, how, what dream do you have? God will bless the dreams you have. You can you imagine when Jesus met blind Bartimaeus? He was crying, "Thou son of David, have mercy on me!" And Jesus said. What do you want me to do for you? Can you imagine a blind man? I'm sure he has been dreaming that one day I'm going to see. Based on what he asked for. Jesus didn't say, come and let me give you a sign. No, he said, no, that I may receive my sight. What does it mean? You are the good God. You are born in goodness. So can I receive yeah. When Elijah, Elijah followed Elijah, Elijah said, What ask what I shall do for you? He said, Look, I don't want your car, I don't want your house, I don't want your wife. I want a double portion of everything you have. Elijah said, No. He said, You have asked a big thing. You that means the man has been dreaming. <laughs> What are you dreaming of? What are you dreaming of? I want to share with us 
How can we get dream? But I'm looking at the time. You said what? I can, live, I can share with you how to get dreams. Hallelujah. Oh, you want to first digest this one first? <laughs> yeah. An appetizer. I want to just go. I'll give you one. Okay. The mama said she give one to just stand up sweet. <laughs> Glory to God. Is it beautiful? Yeah. yeah. Our dreams. Our dreams. You know, somebody said one time, somebody, somebody came to me and said, look, Bishop, the devil is after my life. No. <laughs> I'm the devil, I'm under, I need great deliverance. You know, that's what people say, I need great deliverance. The devil has been after me. So I said to the person, I said, okay, I know, and I have the key right now, I can cage the devil, like a dog, put him in a cage. I still do have the key right now. And I'm going to take him and lock him up. But before I do that, if I lock him up now and make him impossible to disturb you, what would you be doing that he was stopping you from? <laughs> Because he's been disturbing. So what is the thing, I just wanted to find out, what is the thing that is holding you back from that they are not allowing you to do? He said, I don't understand the question. So I, I said it. I said, you understand the question. So I repeated myself and I'm saying it again too. Because see, a whole lot of people, we don't, the problem, why we don't have more, it's not the devil stopping you. Because when you have a dream, once you have your dream, how to fulfill it would supernaturally come to you. No matter what it is. Once you have a dream, how to bring about the fulfillment of a dream will come. Can I hear your email? And the devil will be nowhere around it. He can't stop you. Amen. But most times, because we find a scapegoat who we will dump all responsibilities on, everything is the devil. At least, I, a man of God, so when we get to heaven, the devil will one day can say, I didn't even have a hand in this at all. <laughs> Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, he's a bad guy. So, you know, if you have a thief around you and you can't find your stuff, he stole it. But if you search well, it might be that the thief never really took it. If you didn't just remember where you put it. I've had to accuse somebody of taking something that was mine. Okay. I first I never took it. When I saw it, I was like, man, I had to apologize. <laughs> because I kept it where I was trying to hide it. <laughs> Can I hear it, Amy? Yeah. And I'm, as I was speaking to you, the Holy Spirit just showed me the, 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 when Jesus gave the, the, the parable of the talent. He gave five. He gave three, he gave one. The one that got one, he didn't use it. He didn't abuse it, he didn't misuse it. He just didn't use it. He didn't do anything. The devil didn't come near him. <laughs> but he didn't just have a dream. He didn't know, dream about how that one talent can become two. He just kept it. When the master comes, I will give him what he what is what he gave me. When Jesus returns, I will give him what he gave to me. 
But some people are like, man, can I make eight this into five? Can I make this into ten? And that's why you find out the difference between the world and the church. Right. See, the, there is the person of Jesus and there are the principles of Jesus. The world you knows the principle of Jesus and they use it. And the church knows the person of Jesus, but we ignore the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus will guarantee your eternity in heaven, but the principles of Jesus will make you to live and enjoy abundant life here on earth. There is the love of God and there is the law of God. Like I said to you at the beginning, the love of God is unconditional, but the laws of God are conditional. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. There is the son of God and there, is, there are the systems of God. So we have to understand we you need all of it. Hallelujah. Amen. There is the king and there's the kingdom. <laughs> one is of the heart. The other one is of the mind. We have to know all of it. So you see, a whole lot of people while they are operating, they have a relationship with Jesus. They are the source of God. They are not open. That's why I asked the person, I said, look, if we bind the devil, because the, Jesus said, has given us the key. Whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So we have the keys. I give you the keys of the kingdom that whatsoever you shall bind. And I give you power to turn upon something and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we have what it takes. In my name they shall cast out devils. But once the devil has been cast out do you have a dream? That's why I keep asking. Do you have a dream? Some people's only dream is to bind the devil. So when you finish binding him what next? I bind you, 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 and the guy is bound. And you are still there. I'm binding, I'm binding, I'm binding, I'm binding, I'm binding. I'm binding. What's your bind? What? what about the goodness of God? I share, I think I don't know whether I was here. I shared the testimony. I said to you, I said, hey, God is giving us, say, look, this is my dream for you. And Joseph could have been fighting with his brothers. But he never, he never cared about them. Even when they sold him. He, when he became, he didn't even go to look for them. He has, he's fulfilling his dream. He don't have time for. You don't have the time to waste your energy on losers, haters, people who are envying you, bad biters. Where do you get that energy from? Live your dream. Well, some people's ministry is those hitters. I want to keep them at bay. I want to, you can do that and make progress. Yeah. I'll share with us one of the things that your dream requires is total focus. Your, your dream will require what? Your total focus. And the only way the devil rolls many people is broken focus. If I can give you, if I can shift your focus from your dream, I can keep you from fulfilling your dream. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Yeah. My dream is so important to me, I don't even know what is happening by my side. Okay. And I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Why should I? I'm pursuing my dream because that's the only thing that I can work on. My dream is my world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you still happy and excited? Yes. 
Yeah. God is waking us up. God wants you to have more. I think I will talk on Wednesday about how to get a dream. There are seven ways the Lord has shown me that I want to share with you. Yeah, is this seven? Yeah. Seven ways. Yes. At least seven. I can show you how to get a dream. Glory be to God. You know, there is a dream of the night. That's the one most people can relate to. The dream of the night. You know, the dream of the night. That's one of the dreams. Like you sleep in your night when you eat some, you know, pizza. And you, you know, whether you eat, you know, or you can eat and you, you are so full. Sometimes you get a dream. Then people, a lot of people relate to that because they get that kind of a dream. And what happened in that dream most times is that something is pursuing you, you know. Something is trying to catch up with you, you know, you're afraid, then you get, you know, worried about that dream. It's a kind of a dream. And in fact, God uses such dreams to warn you or to give you direction. Don't discount it, but that's the only one most people can relate with the dream of the night. Like Joseph, when Mary is exposed to the mother of Jesus, came and told him, hey, I'm pregnant, your fiance, right? They are planning to get married and have not touched her. And she came and she said, she's pregnant. And before the guy reached her, I'm saying, no, it's of the Holy Ghost. God pregnant. <laughs> That's a big problem. <laughs> it had to get a dream in the night. <laughs> God had to specially appear to him in the night because only God knows what will happen in the morning. <laughs> Can I hear <laughs> Even me, I will need God to, give, to appear to me in the night, a dream. <laughs> I see you are reading it now. It makes it, you see it's funny to me, but it wasn't funny to me as a man because this it was his wife, his fiance, and they plan to get married, and everything has been set. Everybody knows now. And I say, you know, they are pregnant. <laughs> so don't ignore even that dream. That, that, that's a kind of a dream, but don't ignore what, what the second one, which I'm, I'm giving you two now, and then we're going to round up, is the dream of the mind. Because we have, we're going to look at the law permit, we're going to look into more. The dream of the mind. Can I hear you? Amen. Yes. God can place a dream in your mind, but also God has also given you a mind because you are not a robot. You are not a puppet. God has given you a mind to make decisions. He trusts your dreams. So God is not against your dreams. Can I hear you? Amen. Yeah. yeah. If you begin to dream the one that God doesn't want, he will, come, he will make you stop it. Yeah. He will tell you, look, the dream, this dream is going, you know, outside the plan. The mind one. That's why some people also who have become, they have used their dream in their mind, then they've forgotten God. Because they've entered, they become carnal, unholy. They've despised God. They've rejected God because of the dream of their mind. They turn against God. Selfish dreams. Yeah. James 4 2 says, you, you ask and receive not because you ask and miss. That ask dream is the same ask dream. You dream and did not happen because your dream is carnal that you might consume it upon your, your loss. James 4 3. Yeah. Lossful dreams, you know, those are because you have, that's why you have to guide your mind. You have to subject your mind to the things of God. Amen. But you can have a mind dream like God can put a thought, a God dream in your mind. God can put a thought like Moses in, in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter number uh, 7, verse 22 to 23. Look at this. Let's read that and we pray. Let me not continue with this. So much to say, but we thank God. Thank God for the flow. <laughs> and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was what mighty in words and deeds. Acts 17, verse 23 now. Mm -hmm. And when he was full 40 years old, it came to his heart. Another translation says, it came to his mind. 
to visit his brethren. The dream came to his mind to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. You know, and that's when he went and, you know, he saw, uh, what's it called? He saw the, how they were oppressed and all that because he was already commissioned by God as a deliverer. Hallelujah. You see that? Came to his mind. So that's a dream of what? The mind. God can put if some God can put a thought in your mind. The spirit of God can put a thought in your mind. And you also can have some thoughts in your mind. But you have to also check those thoughts. And is it is it godly? Is it gonna take me away from God? There's nothing wrong in you. People have dreamt and dreamt to the, to the extent that they dreamt God out of their life. That's how, that's how I found that most people who are big carnal dreamers, they don't have anything to do with God because they think that their dreams can take them anywhere, and it does. But unfortunately, they didn't realize that God did not create a world where he will not be needed. <laughs> yeah. God always wants to be involved in what we are doing. So, and because of that, some, we in the church now think we shouldn't dream because we might annoy God or offend God. No, if you dream and God doesn't want, God, God will tell you, look, I don't like this. Change it. There's no wrong. If it won't stop you, but when you don't like it, you know, say change it. David said, oh, why am I living in a posh house and the ark of God is living Outside the tent, I'm going to build God a big house. And God came and said, well, your, idea, your dream is good. But I don't want you to, I don't want the house from you. That's it. You have a good dream to build me a big house, but I don't want a house from you. I never really want to build a house that people are building behind. But for your information, I might even let your son build me a house because you have killed a whole lot of people. Oh. I know what you do. You see, so when you dream, if God is not afraid of your dream, He will tell you. So, so don't allow, oh, what is the will of God? What, what will God do? You know, some people, that's the problem with a whole lot of people. What is the will of God? Will God be angry? God? Let God tell you what He doesn't like. <laughs> You just keep dreaming. When he doesn't like it, he will tell you. Yeah. Trust me, God will tell you. Hey, change course. <laughs> <laughs> but the strength comes when you are able to drop it when God says it. Amen. We're going to continue on oh. Wednesday. We're going to continue on uh, next Sunday because God wants us to, to get this foundation right. Amen. Can I hear him? And I don't be hearing God say, you know, tell my people to dream. Yeah, there are godly dreams that you can have. I'm going to talk about all that. But be a dreamer. Amen. Don't just be a person without dreams. Even the kingdom of God, we can't advance it without dream. If you can't dream of you being a millionaire, now how can you? How can we move the church of God forward? When you're always afraid to dream that you're going to succeed and have more money. Mm. If you say, oh, if I have more money, I'm going to be lost. Just make sure that every, just do direct deposit. Mm -hmm. Why are you to the church and you skip your salvation? <laughs> it's not that simple. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I feel blessed this morning. Are you blessed? I'm going to give the Lord a big clap of a big shout. Hallelujah. Oh, give him a big clap and a big shout. Hallelujah. It's time for the dreamers to emerge. It's time for you to emerge. A big dreamer. Talk to God. Thank him for the word you have heard. Thank him. Say, Lord, I receive the grace to dream. I want to dream big. I want to dream of success. I, I want to dream myself succeeding. I want to dream. I want to, yes, I, I, I don't want to carry my past. I don't want my past to follow me into my future. Yes, my past is my history. My future is my destiny. I want to focus on my future. Yes, whatever your past has been, no matter the limitation, the restriction, the challenges, leave it behind. That's why God said, remember not the former things. 
Now I consider the things of course, I will do a new thing. Say, so shall you not know it now? It shall begin to happen. So receive grace to begin to dream big dreams and great dreams to see yourself winning, succeeding, advancing in your life. Oh my God. Yes, if you are watching me right now, you have not known Jesus, you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. I think that's a dream you need to have. The first dream you need to have is to come into Christ. He said, you're going to be a new creation. All things are going to be passed away. All things are going to become new. And God wants everything in your life to become new. You can be born again. What of God says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter how hard, difficult your past is. God is not going to consult your past to determine your future. God wants to give you a new life so that you can dream and enter into a more victorious future, a more successful future. So I want to pray for you. Yes, as you call upon the name of the Lord, I'm going to lead you in this prayer to call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right where you are, say, Father, I call upon your name. Jesus, I call upon your name. Come into my life right now and save me from my sin. I'm a sinner. I ask that you forgive me my sin. I ask that you make me your own child and write my name in the book of your in the book of life, in your book of life. Today, I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for me. Say it. And on the third day, you rose again for my justification. Thank you for saving me. Father, Lord, thank you for accepting me into your family in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, say, I declare right now that I'm born again, that I'm a child of God. And I thank you for helping me to dream of the great future you have in view for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Oh, congratulations. If you said that prayer, it means you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. You are now a child of God. Welcome to the family of God. Yes. Let me know you said that prayer. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. But before I even tell you I can hear from you, let me pray for you. Father Lord, I pray for this person who has made this decision right now. I pray that your grace that saved this one will keep this one in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, for grace for this person to live for you all the days of his or her life in the name of Jesus. Let another dreamer rise in this person's life. Let this person rise up to be a dreamer in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory be to God. If you said that prayer, please let me hear from you. You can inbox me on Facebook or you can, you can email me uh, info at hoffman.org. That's I-N-F-O at H-O-F-F-A-N.org. Info at hoffman.org. If you want to text me, just text the word hoffman, H-O-F-F-A-N to 678 Nine four zero six zero eight zero. If you look at the top or bottom of this broadcast, you're going to see those numbers there and the information. Please email me, text me, let me know you give your life to Christ. I'm going to send some materials to you that will be a blessing to you. And I'm also going to help you grow in your work with God. Yes, if you're watching this message, you're actually watching our Sunday service. You can be a part of our ministry and our church. Anywhere you are in the world, we'll be glad to reach out to you. Thank you and God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Church, can you lift up our hands? I pray for the grace and the baptism of a dreamer upon your life. The Spirit of God will become effective in our life. The Holy Spirit is not just for tongues. It also helps us to dream dreams. That's why the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of men what God has prepared for them that love him. And he has revealed them to us by his Spirit. This year you will dream big dreams. And you will see your dreams accomplished and fulfilled. Amen. You will see those success that you desire in every area of your life. Amen. Your life will be more and bigger Amen. by your dreams. And I pray and I release grace for big dreams into your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Do you receive it in Jesus' name? Amen. Then give the Lord another big, big clap and a big, big shout. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Father. 
What a blessing. What a joy. Hallelujah. It's time to dream and taste more and more of God's goodness. Hallelujah. We're going to partake of the Lord's uh, table right now. We're going to eat of the Holy Communion. And then thereafter, we're going to come and take our offerings. But well, let's take of this wonderful meal that God has prepared for us on this first day. If you are, if you are in your house, please get the Holy Communion. Um, I don't think you can see me there. Get the Holy Communion elements. Get your bread, your, uh, your juice. Amen. Grape juice. Glory be to God. Or your apple juice, non-alcoholic uh, wine. Please get that. We're going to uh, pray right now and we partake of the Holy Communion. This is very powerful. And on this first Sunday of the year, it's very important. Yes. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he has broken it, he blessed it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat it, you do it in remembrance of me. Thank you, Father. Yes. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he has sucked. He said, this is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you eat and you drink it, we do show the Lord's death till he comes. Father Lord, I pray that this season to be ordinary, even that which your children are using at home, their bread, their wine, oh God, that seems to be ordinary. Let it right now receive a touch from you and become the very body and the blood of Jesus. Lord, as we eat the bread, drink the blood, let our eyes be open. Let power be impacted, let healing, let blessing. Everything that Jesus procured for us, wisdom, riches, power, wealth, let it become our portion in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Anything that is contrary in our lives, O oh God, let the blood, O oh God, swallow them up in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God, and we call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please take the body and pray over it, and we're going to make some declaration together one more time. Makataya bakata leba kotolobes kondolomo shankantelebede kanta laba shakata laba sheketeles. Yes, lift up that body. So it's a father. Father. Right now, I thank you for the body of my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, as I partake of it now, I partake of his strength. I partake of his power. I partake of his ability. Say his body was broken so that mine would not be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. As I eat this bread, this body now, let my eyes be open to see the blessings that surround me. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, and I call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now eat the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Can you help me with this? Thank you. Yes. Lift up the blood. Certainly say, Father, I declare right now that I know that the life of the flesh is in the blood right now as I drink the blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I drink of his life. I drink of his power. I drink of his uh, wisdom. I drink, wisdom. I drink of his strength. I drink of the strength. Say, this is the cup of the blessing. This is the cup of the blessing. I drink of the blessings of the Lord. The of the In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And I ask, oh God, that any, infirmity, that any infirmity, any trace of sickness, trace of sickness disease, disease, disease that may be in my blood system, let it be swallowed up now, be swallowed up now. In, the in the name of Jesus, as I drink the blood of Jesus, the same way the rod of the magicians in Egypt 
swallowed up. And the rod of Moses, I beg your pardon, the rod of Moses swallowed up the rod of the magicians in Egypt. Let this blood swallow up every trace of infirmity, sickness, and disease in my body in the name of Jesus. Say so this year, 2021, I will live and not die. I will live a sickness free life in the name of Jesus. I will live as an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. For we overcame and we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. This is the blood in my hand. So I declare and decree. I will be an overcomer in, in all aspects of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for big dreams, for victory dreams, for successful dreams in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Drink and be blessed. Hallelujah. This is my body broken for you. And as you eat it, remember me. This is my blood poured out for you. And as you drink it, remember me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Take your seat. God bless you, people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take an offering for the Lord. We're going to take uh, actually two offerings. Today is the first Sunday in this uh, month and in this year. And every first Sunday of the month, we take our seed faith offering. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And this, the word for the month says, the foundation for tasting, for sin and tasting more and more. So we're going to take a seed faith. Somebody, how many people want to taste? the goodness of God more and more. You want to taste and see the goodness of God. So I will encourage you to take a seed faith offering. The seed faith offering means you take a seed, financial seed, and wrap your faith around it and say, Lord, I'm believing you for more and more. I want to taste the goodness of God more and more in my life. So take your seed faith offering and also your worship offering. And your tithe, we're gonna. I'm gonna take the tithe, pray over the tithe, and take the seed faith. But those for those of us online, you can give online. www.household.orphan.org. I beg your pardon. www.orphan.org. That's h o f f a n. dot o r g. Click the give button. Follow the prompt. Identify. I said this is my seed faith offering, and then also if you are giving your worship. If you are paying your tithe, let us know what it is for. You can also give by cash, app, and Zelle. The number to that is 678-294-6494. The information is actually still available on the website, but write, you can write the number down, 678-294-6494. Glory be to God. I want to pray for tithe as first. Anybody paying tithe, please stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Lift up your tithe. At home, you know, just stretch forth your hand and touch your screen. This is a of contact, very important. Father, thank you for everyone paying tithes today. Your children have brought their tithe in obedience to your word. You want to say, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in your house. You said you will open them the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Amen. Father, we ask that you pour blessings into the life of every tighter today. Amen. Let there be no room enough to receive it. Let the de devourer for their sake. Amen. Let these ones become a delight of the land. Let harvest meet harvest in their lives Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. We call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Your tight. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Sister Barbara, thank you. Amen. All right. Just remember I had my tithe also. I need to pay my tithe. So let me add it quickly to my offering. All right. You have your seed faith and your offering. Yeah. Uh, 
We're going to take all of them together. Yes, we're going to take just take your envelope, write it, your seed faith. I'm going to pray over the seed faith offering. Always stretch your faith to believe God. That's how you dream. One of the reasons why God gives us uh, opportunity to sow is so that we can dream increase. Can I hear him? Amen. Can dream more and more. Actually, one of the ways to get dreams from God is true giving. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm still going to teach about that, but it's there in my note. When, you, when Solomon gave good offering, God gave him a dream that made him so great. So true giving, you can receive dreams. So give us our dreamers. Amen. You are dreaming that this will not be my last. Amen. God will give me more Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. You, so Lord. take your uh, seed faith offering, your offering that you are giving, your worship offering, and I'm going to pray. Father, Lord, I thank you for everyone, oh God, giving a seed faith offering today. This is the first Sunday of the year, and this is the new year we are in. I pray that, Lord, the word of more and more of your goodness will become a reality in every life in the name of Jesus. That we will lay this foundation and we're going to grow into it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord, your blessings will overflow in our lives. Your goodness will show up for everyone releasing their faith today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them begin to dream and pray, oh God, that millionaires, millionaires and billionaires will rise up from this congregation in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, oh God, financial giants and champions will rise up, oh God, out of this congregation. Amen. Those in-house, online, on Zoom, anywhere your people are connecting to this grace Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. I dream millionaires, supernatural millionaires Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. And for everyone giving, oh God, when we give each other, giving us was good God bless you online. God bless you. Everyone of you giving, God bless you. As you sow, it will come back to you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is going to be an executive year. In terms of blessing, Amen. that means you're going to have executive Amen. order of blessing. Amen. Yes, yeah, Amen. yeah. Amen. Be an executive year of blessing. Amen. You know, executive mean like, you know, top, 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 top line. You know, Amen. big time, effective blessing. Traveling in first class. Yes, if you have to travel, as you know. All those kind of things. You're going to get preferential treatment. Amen. Special advantages. Amen. I say special advantages. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Woo! Yes. Explosive Amen. blessings. Yes. That's our portion. I'm going to say that's my portion this that's year. Portion. One more time. It says preferential treatment. Preferential special treatment. advantages. Special advantages. <laughs> and explosive blessings. And yeah. It's going to happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you happy? Yeah. All right. Um, good, good news. Amen. Hallelujah. Actually, my second service today, I preached my first service in this year Amen. in Pakistan. to them in Pakistan. You know, I'm going to show you some of the pictures for those of you that were here. Uh, you know, people love God. You know, very, very wonderful congregation out there. 
you know, it's very, it's very touching. You know, they're all out, you know, they, they say the place is cold, but, oh. you, know, they, they, you know, they've all completed building, but, you know, they were all there, you know, outside, you know, in the cold, all wrapped up and all that, and, you know, it was just a, it was just a blessing, it was a blessing to preach their the heart history. So God has opened the doors yeah. of the nation yeah. come to us. God has opened the door from here, yeah. you know, but we're preaching there. Yeah. yeah. We're excited, we're happy. A lot of people gave their life to Christ. And I believe we're going to have more testimonies as I speak to them. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory be to God. So I'm excited to God be the glory. So that's our ministry. We're making impact. Yeah. We're going to God say, ask the people, all nations. We're touching uh, the nations. Yeah. Glory be to God. I've never preached in Pakistan before, but I did today. To the glory of God. <laughs> and I didn't have to fly or travel there. God just made it easy, you know. Yeah, I only had to wake up very early, you know, to, because of their time and to be there. And God is faithful to give God all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, but also, I want to encourage us um, Wednesday, we're going to have a Bible study. I'm going to start our prayer and fasting on the 7th. That's on Thursday. We're going to be fasting for 21 days. Amen. Amen. 21 days. Uh, for, and we're going to be praying together. We're going to give you the timetable. But for now, we're going to maintain our prayer schedule for this week. I might send some prayer topics to you to pray about. But this week is for you to pray for yourself, the foundation of your life, whatever it is. We're going to send some prayer topics to help you out on Wednesday. I'm going to do that, you know, to give you something to pray about. But uh, Thursday, we have launched our Miracle Prayer Meeting every Thursday. So we're going to be praying on Thursday. I know that the ministers will, will have your time of praying and leaders will have your time of praying. So maintain that and the intercessory department will pray. So we're already praying all through the week anyway. So <laughs> we're going to keep that schedule for this for now. If the Lord, you know, uh, gives us any special direction, we're going to let you know. So on Friday, we're going to be praying together 7.30 to uh, 9.30. Friday on the prayer phone line. Uh, it's on the website for those watching can be a part of it. It was open to all. Also on Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m., we'll be praying together to the glory of, to the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> and on Wednesday, we'll have Bible study at 7.30 p.m. Is that clear? Fill it and you know, bring it so that when we begin to pray, we're going to drop it and then we can pray. And the good news is that, oh, we're going to miss North Cross from next Sunday. We have to go to North Cross. We've been going to North Cross. So we're opening up us. We're going back to our second location. We've had, had this reunion. You've been blessed. I want to pray for all of you. But North Cross is going to open up from next uh, Sunday. Glory be to God. Are you going to see me more in North Cross this year? Praise I will not leave you like a day. Uh, the last thing we're going to see me more. Amen. Amen. Yes, you all have been very uh, enjoyed. I've enjoyed your fellowship, so I will come. Yeah, we will be alternating with Bishop elect, you know, more. And we pray, we believe God to open more locations this year, also in Jesus' name. Thank God for the online uh, ministry, the Zoom, the Facebook, internet, I mean, YouTube. God has opened us up. You know, mm -hmm. and we're reaching many more people. Yeah, yeah. That's how you know God. People are watching. People are receiving. Yeah, That's how God is. Yeah. God yeah. connected many people that connect. I don't. I've never met them, but God opened the door and they reached out to me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, I just love to be with you all, but you know, people. <laughs> so when I when the, when God opened the door, I just flow. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. So, uh, but not cross. I'm proud of you all. And I thank God for your lives, you know, and I, you know, that's how it is, you know, that's the sacrifice. Our dream is so big, we can't just look, I mean, just localize ourselves, we have to spread, we have to take more territories for Jesus Christ, yeah. glory be to God, yeah. but you're going to, and we're always together anyway on Wednesday, on Friday, yeah. just on Sunday that you don't see me, so, <laughs> and you see my wife, you don't see my wife, I see me, you all have the best, yeah. you know, she's yeah. a very powerful teacher, yeah. and Prophetess, woman of God, she's very anointed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You know, my wife is my number one, uh, uh, what is it called? 
the cycle. So she she sucks from me. You know, she reminds me of some of the things I preach myself. She preaches back to me when I need the message. She remembers it all. Praise the Lord. So and we thank God for your life and uh, our pastor, Pastor Janet, awesome witness. Helen, God bless you. Barbara, amen. You are the that's why I put you, I leave you there because I know you are a powerful team, and I believe you know that's how you know it's strong. That's how we can see. And you're gonna to continue to grow and to grow amen. and to grow. Can I hear it? Amen. amen. You must agree unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we must keep reaching out. We must keep reaching out. I know for us to be together is always wonderful, but we'll forget about we don't want to forget about our dream and our vision. Amen. To do more for God. Can I hear you? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Those of us here in Smyrna, God bless you. Amen. God bless you, my name is Mr. Erica. Uh, Deborah, Princess Aranua. Praise the Lord. She doesn't like the sister thing. First. <laughs> and, and the rest of the crew, Sister Joy is there. Sister Sherry is there. Amen. How many people have there on the Zoom? Amen. And all the people, Brother Dalo, everyone, you know, here, um, every one of you, God bless you. Everyone is doing their part. Sister Lisa also is there in Kentucky. Sister Joy is in Florida. So faithful people, you know, all of us. And you can see we are spreading. We are growing. Yeah, we are growing. And God is going to do even more. And Kim, Kim, Sister Kim, Sister Kim is always on Facebook, doesn't miss it. She's in, um, what's it called, close, close to Alabama. Sister Kim is there, you know, so she's always on on Facebook and, you know, and all the people around, uh, brother uh, Patrick is in Haiti, uh, so we thank God for that, so we're growing, God is doing great and mighty things, you know, yeah, a little one is becoming a thousand, a small one, a great nation, God is doing great things, can I hear you, amen, praise the Lord, so that's how we continue to do it. And anyone, I didn't remember to mention your name, Mama Regina is there taking up the yeah. uh, seniors and the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. And uh, all the other people, God bless you all. Amen. Fantastic team. Let's believe God for a great year. So as we continue to pray and fast, it's going to be happening. Amen. Amen. Sister Marta is also there. Uh, Courtney, Miss O'Shea. All of everybody all around the place, Amen. you know, we're just blessed by God. Amen. 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 All right. Any other announcements? Oh, I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> not cross I'm going to let the people on uh, Facebook go. Uh, we thank God for you on Facebook. You know, if you are there, let us know you are watching. Let us know where you are watching from. We actually want you to be a part of this ministry anywhere you are in the world. We want you to connect. If you are watching us, if you can hear this, you are, you are part of our Sunday service. So I want you to connect. Please email me, text me, and I thank God for every one of you that is already texting. I want to hear also your testimonies. Amen. Let me know how this message is blessing you. I want to hear from you in the name of Jesus. I have some people who have connected in Europe also who have already indicated. They say they watch the broadcast and they are part wow. of the church. So we thank God for every one of you Amen. around the world. Give the Lord a baby clap offering. So don't miss any of the service. Just go to the website, www.coffer.org. Look at the service schedule and be a part of it. And God will continue to bless you. We love you. We look forward to seeing you. We're fasting from uh, the 7th of January. That's Thursday to uh, the 27th. And we're fasting from morning to evening, like morning to like 6 p.m. You can, you, know, you can drink water a little in between. If you feel you can, you know cope, but just, you know, pray and talk to God. Amen? Amen. And God, you know, fasting is part of the kingdom requirement and responsibility. Amen. Jesus said, when you fast, not if, when. So there are times we have to make ourselves to wait upon the Lord to, to seek his face and to fellowship with him, to crucify the flesh and to be alive in the spirit. So we love you. And we look forward to seeing you again next Sunday on our Bible study. Our Bible study is usually on Zoom so you can join, and we're live on YouTube on our Bible study. Um, if you have to join us, if you're watching us on Facebook, our Bible study is not live on Facebook, but it's live on Zoom. And don't forget, I do broadcast every Tuesday uh, on Facebook, live broadcast every Tuesday. So please connect, go to our website, get all the information we love. We look forward to seeing you again. We'll see you next time 
want you to know that Jesus loves you and so do we. Happy New Year. I love you all. Give them a big clap and a big shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. All right, those on Zoom stay. Uh, we're going to